When people enter a landscape, it's a way of experiencing art that's a little different from just about any other way to experience art. You can look at a painting, you can hear a piece of music. Landscapes are a three-dimensional installation, if you will, or a three-dimensional piece of art that you enter and walk through. It's been 30-some years now that I've been doing work that has to do with growing plants and the interactions that people have with plants and kind of bringing the two together. That's the definition of, my definition of public horticulture. It includes design, teaching collections, giving programs. It's a wide-ranging position. One of my big hopes for the campus is that it's a place of refuge and rest and comfort as you leave the stress of the classroom and go out into the world and get to the next class and do the next thing that has to be done. The design process has several facets to go to it. Sometimes we're fixing a problem. Sometimes we have a brand new space to work with. A big project like the upcoming Math and Science Building means that we have, I wouldn't call it a blank slate, but wow, lots and lots of space to work with. And so what I try to do is think about who's gonna use the landscape, how does that landscape need to function? In other words, is it a place where people want to play Frisbee? Or is it a place where we need a plant collection that teaches plants that are part of the fossil record? Or does it need to be both? Once we've thought that through and talked to those folks and asked those functions questions, then I go to photographs, put tissue paper over the top of that photograph and start drawing in mature trees and flowering rose bushes and all of the beautiful things that it takes 30 years <laughs> to happen. It helps the viewer envision what the landscape could look like. This is the art of it, just what looks good to my eye that meets those functional needs. Then the next part of the process is taking that view and dropping it down so that it's a bird's eye view. So then I'm doing square footage on the ground, this tree here, that tree there. We're actually making certain that we choose the best plants, the best way to manage them, use less water, use less herbicide, less labor, less equipment on the ground. All of those things are important, I think. But one of the things that we think about when we plant a tree is, is this thing likely to have pests? Is it likely to be damaged? What do we need to plant that does well here? If we have plants that are well suited for our climate, well suited for whatever the weather throws at us, then we'll have a maturing landscape. We planted about 1,200 trees in the last 12 years. That makes a difference in the canopy. And some of those first planted trees are now big enough to cast shade. So that's a wonderful thing. So we have burr oaks and we have the Norway maples and we have all kinds of native trees like the Kentucky coffee tree. The CSC campus landscape has grown over the last several years with lots of support from lots of places all over campus. I rely on the grounds crew to build good soils because the soil here is awful. They bring their equipment, their knowledge, uh, their willingness to the tasks. So we now have good soil in locations all over campus. We have wonderful plants all over campus. Uh, plants that are either well adapted or native and just thrive here. So if, if you were to walk through the campus and hadn't been here for 10 years, I think what you'd see is more shade, more diversity of plants, uh, well-grown plants, and a landscape that's been knit together from building to building to building by the trees and other shrubs and plants that grow in between those buildings. I hope that the fresh air gives a sense of well-being. Um, and when all the oxygen is just pouring off these trees and onto you as you walk down the sidewalk, I can't help but think that's got to be good for you. I hope that benefit is perhaps subtle, but very, very real and, and part of the process of entering into a picture.